Alright, it is time to get on the pond. Yeah, what a trip this thing is. Well, look at this. So you get into this little corridor and get in the pod and it takes you right to the top. Here we go. Thank you. Oh boy. All right, friends, welcome back to Park Junkie. What is up? Todd C. coming to you from the place to be today, Gateway Arch National Park, St. Louis, Missouri. That's right, the Show Me State's contribution to the national parks. Now, a lot of folks have argued about this, whether it should or should not be a national park. Certainly isn't the Grand Canyon or Yellowstone, but nevertheless, a cool structure out here constructed back in the 1960s to commemorate our nation's expansion westward. Now, this place is interesting, cool, small, only 92 acres here. We should be able to cover it in no time, but today we have a ticket to go right to the top of the arch here in St. Louis. So let's go check out the scene. All right, part of the park includes the old cathedral over here. You may be able to hear the bells of the old cathedral right now ringing as it looks like it's 10 o'clock. This church part of the park as well. You can see it is right here by the arch. Now we're going to head down here, jump into the arch, uh, jump into the visitor center. This visitor center just recently constructed. It's a pretty sweet visitor center. They got a museum in here, which uh, which details a lot of the history surrounding the 1803 uh, Louisiana Purchase and the subsequent Lewis and Clark expedition, which came through St. Louis, Missouri, on its way westward toward the Oregon shores. Now we're going to go in here, get on our pod and head right to the top of the arch. Let's roll. All right, once you come down through the security checkpoint, you're down here in the visitor center at the bottom and you can make your way back through the museum all the way to the uh, entrance to the south and the north tram, which is all the way down at the end. Here in the middle, a museum detailing the history of the St. Louis area and the construction of the arch. Beginning here, a little uh, uh, colonial St. Louis display from 1764 through 1804. And then we move into um, the Manifest Destiny idea, New Frontiers, Jefferson's Vision, Riverfront area, and then the construction of the arch through today. So a uh, period of history represented here in the museum, which runs from 1764 through the construction of the arch in the 1960s. All right, making our way into the corridor here, we're gonna head onto the pod, heading upward. Just kind of wait in line here, they got you queued up. The architect of the Sarge. Sarge was a famous American who won a competition in 1947. But unfortunately, his star was not around to see the arch and started. When the arch had started February 12, 1963, and finished on October 28, 1965. The architect is here, full sway, five days, six and a half, and 35 an hour wage. This is a good time to be up there if you want to storm a bit, and we'll start to sway a little bit. The arch is in technology. Number two. All right. And so you come down here in the basement, you kind of queue up in front of these little uh, pods, and this door is going to open in a minute. We're going to get into a pod, which is going to take us right up to the top. It's about a four minute ride up. So uh, it'll be an exciting four minutes. All right. It is time to get on the what a trip this thing is. Well, look at this. So you get into this little corridor and get in the pod and it takes you right to the top. Here we go. Thank you. Oh boy. Look at this. So bizarre, a set of stairs heading upward. Where are we going? We'll see when we get to the top. I'm not really sure. I can see a little bit 
through these little vents in the top. But this is the scene as we move upward here in another gorgeous national park. Just look at that scenery, will you? Alright. I know, I know, I know. All right, well the scene up here at the top of the arch, you can see a lot of folks here. We've got both the north side and the south tram. So there's a north and the south tram. One comes up one side, one goes up the other. And um, you end up about 630 feet above the streets below. Look at that shadow of the arch, the old courthouse out to the left. Look at the beautiful fall collars down there, far below. That's gorgeous today. Much better than my last visit to the arch. A few years ago I came up here and cloudy day, couldn't see a thing. Gateway Arch National Park fountain down there and that's all new yeah how about that you can see some of the city out there you can't even get to the courthouse from here visually but you can barely make it out over there no 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 not really anyway that's what it looks like out there hmm. how about that here we now see the arch and the uh, we see the both the north and south feet of the arch and the shadow. Got about a minute left up here. They um, give you about 10 minutes up here to view the surrounding area. So pretty cool. They're both feet looking down far below, 630 feet below right there, the riverboat. You can take cruise on those river boats from here at Gateway Arch. And then of course you have I-70, one of the main corridors across the United States, right there to the right. Yep. Not your average National Park experience, right? Definitely bizarre. Cool view up there, no doubt about that. Um, what a bizarre feature this is, and these little pods that we're in as we go down are really weird. <laughs> It's like something out of the Cold War, man. It's got such a really like Cold War feel. You know, the arch wasn't uh, the arch was authorized back in the 1930s. Um, after a lot of uh, him hauling about about how they were going to do this, eventually construction began uh, in 1961. It was completed, I think, in 1964, 1965. So definitely right in the heart of the Cold War. So it kind of has that feel to it. You know, these little uh, these little pods are just I don't know. It's a, it's a feel right about them. There's it's like a Stanley Kubrick film or something in here. You know, that is the makeup of the arch itself. You can see. All those bolts just bolted in. Stairs going up. I forget how many stairs. There's over a thousand stairs there. <laughs> Originally designed so you could walk up it, but for some reason they don't let you do that anymore. Probably some sort of liability thing. Unfortunate. I'd like to ride up it or walk up it. It wouldn't really matter. Now the trip down about three minutes. Trip up four minutes. Gravity matters, my friends. Gravity matters. All right, well, how cool is that, right? So, yeah, eight pods, eight little ways right to the top. Cool trip, no doubt. The view is a lot better this time than it was last time. Like I said, I was up there a few years ago, and uh, it was a rainy, overcast day, and we couldn't see a thing. So today, with that sunshine and a little bit of the shadow of the arch down below, quite a treat, right? Well, down in the basement of the visitor center here, the museum runs through the history of the westward expansion. Of course, the arch built originally, the conception of it was uh, designed to uh, commemorate the westward expansion of the United States, and it was originally called the Jefferson Expansion National Memorial. And as you can see, 
a lot of the history here in the museum details that westward expansion. Uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition. They were uh, sent westward to find a water route to uh, the Pacific Ocean and to facilitate uh, a, a relationship with the native tribes across the uh, what would become the United States. A lot of uh, botanical, uh, a lot of flora and fauna collected along that route, sent back to Jefferson. He was continually uh, asking for updates and continually asking for specimens that the scientists on the Lewis and Clark expedition would find and then ship back to him. Yeah, so the museum is actually really cool. A lot of interactive displays in here, a lot of touch screens telling stories of different figures through the history of this area. All right, friends, well, that's going to conclude our visit here inside the arch into the museum. We're going to go outside and stroll around. There's 92 acres of park here, so let's go check it out. Oh, man, it is fall here in St. Louis today. A beautiful day, however. It is 72 degrees out here. Light winds and light crowds, really. Unfortunately, the old courthouse here closed at this time at Gateway Arch National Park. This, of course, the site of the Dred, of the original Dred Scott decision. Dred Scott and his wife, Harriet Scott, slaves who were owned by an army surgeon named Dr. Emerson. They were taken away from Missouri. They were originally here in Missouri. However, they were taken from Missouri all the way up into the Wisconsin Territory, and then they were returned here. Now, upon returning to Missouri, they sued for their freedom, claiming that once they'd been taken into a free state, they should remain free people. Unfortunately, the courts decided against that here originally in St. Louis at the old courthouse in 1847. As we know, that case moved on to the Supreme Court, which then decided against them once again. That was one of the pivotal moments in the moves up to the Civil War in the 1870s. 60s. All right, another one of the scenes here at Gateway Arch National Park, the old cathedral right here, the Basilica of St. Louis, King of France, the old cathedral established in 1770. That as well, an old piece of architecture here in the St. Louis area, right beside the arch just to its east. All right, right here at the base of the arch, you could come up, touch the arch, slam your hand on it, feel that, yeah, it's real. And right there, it appears out of nowhere as we move out toward the river. We're gonna take a stroll down what's called the Grand Staircase over here. Move down toward the river and we can look back on the beautiful arch. All right, friends, well, I have to tell you that no visit here to the Gateway Arch is complete without a quick swim here in the river. Uh, right here on the banks we are, and we're just going to take a dive into this thing right now just to get ourselves more in touch with Gateway Arch National Park. I'm just kidding. I'm not swimming in this stuff. However, you can come down and take a riverboat cruise. That is one of the, uh, one of the activities offered here in Gateway Arch. I often like to stop in, just have a picnic under the trees while I'm cruising through, just grab some uh, edibles of some form, sit down under a tree, enjoy yourself while you're driving through here. The Interstate 70 goes through, Interstate 64, a number of different routes come through here, so if you find yourself in the area, there's 
no reason not to have a little picnic here enjoy the scene of the arch you can go down into the museum that's free it's going to cost you about 15 bucks here in 2022 to go to the top of the arch um but uh you can take riverboat cruises as well you can watch the movie you can add all that up i think the cost for everything is about 40 dollars right now but hey you know it's a free place to have a picnic and the museum is worth your time as well all right friends well that is going to wrap it up from here in gateway arch national park what a cool little visit that was didn't get to get into the courthouse here today but the arch will suffice that was a cool trip to the top we got a good view while we were up there as well which we didn't get last time thanks for tuning in as always here on park junkie i appreciate your time and you can check me out over at parkjunkie.com you can also get me at the park junkie on instagram park junkie on twitter park junkie on facebook all that good stuff so thanks for tuning in as always i'm gonna hit the road time to hit i-70 eastbound and down got more stuff to do more places to see more people to see more deals to make let's roll my friends thanks for tuning in catch you next time cheers